Architectural Builder Supply is pleased to present you with this recording of the technical question that is listed in the title of this video. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. Looking for a Amwell type door. It's a going to be on a commercial type door for our water plant. It is a um, it's got to be a 16 gauge. Need a window in it if possible. You know, one of the wire type windows. And I'm going to need a frame. And it's in the it's in a concrete uh, type block wall. So that I have to be more to stand. On the specs, it's the frames have to have a four jam anchors per jam. Is that something you could help me with? Yes. Okay. Um, what other information do you have? I measured the door, and I'm getting – it's a 3 door. I'm getting 83 and a quarter on the height. I would think it should be 84, but – Are you replacing it has the frame a, as well? No. Oh, okay. You want to replace the door only. Okay. Um, oh, no, no, no. We're Yeah, we're going to need to do the frame with it. Yeah, we might as well do the frame because it was put in a 95. Okay. Yeah, so the, the net door size doesn't matter at all at this point. Um, what matters when okay. you order it is the rough opening size. Okay. So we need to know the exact frame size? Is that what you need nope. to know? or? Nope. You need to know how big the hole is in the wall. I can't – well, that's – I can't give an exact measurement with that frame there, really. I don't need it now. Unless so we – you go to order it, you, you'd need to know it. Know it. Okay. I can price it based on knowing that it's not going to be the perfect size for a new door and frame. Right. And then we're going to need – it's got a Falcon-type lock on it. Is that something that you all have as well? Sure. Or something compatible? Okay. I want to get the whole thing, you know, when I do it, order it one time. So what is the Falcon type lock? Is it a lock set or is it an exit device? It's a lock set and it's where you can come in or out either way. And we don't, uh, I, I believe it does have a key on it, but I don't ever lock it. I mean, we we could, you know, but there's somebody here 24 seven. It's an entrance door going to the outside of our plant there. Oh, okay. But and it's got, you know, what I call the European style, the handle that you you know you push down and opens instead of the doorknob. It's got that type of a lock on it. Like I said, it has Falcon locked on it. Uh, we don't have to go with Falcon, but something compatible with that, you know, on a commercial scale. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know which lock you have just by saying Falcon. They make a, a, a wide variety of different lock types. Um, I can yeah. budget a number based on it being commercial grade. Right. Okay. Yeah, we can uh, we figure out the door, and it's gonna, of course, have to match the door and match the frame and all that good stuff too. Like I say, it doesn't have to be a Falcon lock. It just a commercial grade. Yes. Got it. Preferably Easy. something that we can get parts and repair later on. Yeah, it's amazing how many people don't think of that. You can, you know, you can, you can save a hundred bucks on an Asian imported lock, but then you can't get a three dollar spring. So, you know, there you go. <laughs> uh, we've been pretty good at making them, but we shouldn't have to do that. <laughs> you shouldn't have to. You should be able to get documentation and a part number. <laughs> so, right, yeah. I should be able to tell you, say, I need part number so and so and so from this door, and you go, okay, got it. Life don't work that way, like you said, Falcon locks. There's probably five different, ten different ones here of different Falcon locks. So we try to interchange oh. parts on them, and sometimes they don't interchange. Yeah, they, and plus they've changed them over the years. Yeah. And back in 95, they charged us five, $600 a lock, you know, for the contractor to put them in. So I don't know what they run nowadays. Well, it depends on which series you have. I mean, it, they could be that or more, or they could be less. Yeah, I mean, we just have to look at uh, – I want what's best to come on the new door. You know, like I said, it doesn't have to be a Falcon. Um, a key would be a plus, so that if we were wanting to lock the plant, we could. 
you know, lock that door. Like I say, normally it would not be locked, but it'd be good to have a set of keys in my office where if for some reason we needed to lock it, we could. Now, that no door problem. may have a deadbolt in it. I'm not sure. I, I forgot to look at that. What I could do is send you pictures of it, too, if we need to. Um, so this door is fire rated, correct? Uh, yes, I would think so. I was looking at the old specs from 95 when it was put in, and it was, uh, I was kind of looking at, uh, it says, door shall be hollow metal of size and design as shown. Of course, it doesn't show me the size. It says 16 gauge cold rope steel. Uh, all, all metal be, uh, all doors furnished with reinforced glass windows, kick plates, closers, thresholds, weather stripping, which we'll do, and door holders. Uh, and, okay, so that's all okay with the last part of what you said. You can't have a door holder on it. Yeah, is that, uh, when they say door holders, they meant the little metal deals like where you open the door and it brings it back to you, correct? No, uh, that sounds like a door closer. Um, door holder right. will keep the door in the open position. Right. Now, do they come with closers that have like the little deal you slide and it will leave it open if you need to open it? You can't leave do it that open with a fire like door. Oh, okay. You, you can't gotcha. do that with with that hardware. You can do it other ways, um, but not with a mechanical surface closer. You can tie it into okay. a you know a um, some sort of detector, a fire panel, leave it held open, and then have it automatically close upon that that um, um, that circuit opening. Um, right. But but yeah, you can't have a. I mean, you can put one on there. I'm not the I'm not the fire code police. I'm just saying code would not permit it. <laughs> right. Well, now there's nothing here that says that has to be a fire door. There's nothing yeah. in the spec sheet that says it does. Yeah, but it sounds like it must be because it it sounds like you've got an office out to the plant. Well, yeah, actually what this is is I've got a, you know, got several doors like this. So I've got you know, you go out my office into the break room and out the break room into the plant, but where this one is is from the plant to outside. Oh, an exterior opening. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, you could do it then. Uh it doesn't have to be fired okay. then. Okay. Yeah, that, uh, and I forgot to mention that. It is an exterior door. Got it. So that changes the dynamics now, right? Uh, yeah, makes it so that it doesn't have to be fire rated, sure. Right. And kick plate, all that good stuff. So you could put a closer that has the deal on it that does, you know, like if a guy was bringing something in, he could open it. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. The old one was broke. We just used a brick. You know, that will work, too. It does. But. Um, it's not good for the life expectancy <laughs> of the door, but, yeah. yeah. You know. Well, yeah, we are Texans, so we will innovate when we have to. Like, dude, just kick a brick up here and hold the door open when we get stuff in there. <laughs> uh, I did a really cool tour of the, cap the state capitol building and um, – just such a great, great building um, in terms of hardware. Um, the coolest thing is out front, the obelisk that's there, and it basically says, I, I, I wouldn't say that I study or I'm a student of Civil War history, but I, I'm, I know more than the next thousand people I stand next to, and I, I have a lot of stupid <laughs> friends. Um, the coolest thing that's out in front of that thing is, hey, North, it took a million of you and only 300,000 of us, and you but just barely beat us is what that thing says. And I said, damn, I love it. I just love it. <laughs> well, you know, my great-great-grandfather and great-great-uncle, they fought for the Confederacy, but, you know, they were just privates and corporals and stuff. I don't think they ever – they probably never even shot anybody. I don't know. They were cooks. But, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's the, you know, and that's the, and they were very important. They would not have put a rifle into someone's hand that could feed everyone. Um, you know, that's right. what's really neat about the Civil War. The majority of people, there was, you know, you, all you hear about is the mass amputations and the gruesome and death and blah, blah, blah. Well, percentage wise, most people didn't encounter that. But if you laid all the people who died in the Civil War head to feet, head to feet, it would go from Chicago to Atlanta. Um, so there's that's a lot. You know, that's a lot, yeah, that's a lot. Well, these guys yeah, the were cattlemen, so they drove the cattle behind the Confederacy and fed them. That's what they did. 
Yeah. Yeah. My dad was just um, in San Antonio, and he. My name is Richard Howard. He's like, hey, there was a Texas Ranger who was named Richard Howard. I'm like, of course. <laughs> He's probably out cool. there, you know, in Comancheria. Yeah, way out there in Del Rio or somewhere. <laughs> he ever goes, but that's okay. Yeah. A lot of Comanches and Apaches out there at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, question here: When that door measures, say, on the highest, like eighty-three and a quarter, shouldn't uh, that doesn't is it, or is it really the frame that's going to matter, isn't it? Well, or like so, you said, the uh, the opening. Yeah, the, the rough opening is the only dimension that matters at this point because uh, you're doing a retrofit. A seven foot right. door, so seven foot, seven foot equals eighty four inch. That's what we call the nominal size. If you measure right. the bottom of the jam to the underside of the head, that's eighty four inch. Your door's got to yeah. be smaller. It's got to have that eighth of an inch at the top, and then typically three quarter at the bottom. Your door should measure eighty three and an eighth, but it could be eighty three and a quarter. It could be. Well, um, we're probably off that much, you know. Yeah, so it's it just doesn't, you know, um, knowing that it's going to be an odd size that the door and frame are going to have to be, you know, sheared and bent and press broke to, to fit the requirements of the face dimension or the net size and height and width of the door. Right. Um, you know, the frame is going to be 40 by 86 on the OD. Ideal, ideally, you want some shim around that so that you can get the door and frame true plumb level and square. Um, mm -hmm. And that that opening is you know, probably is certainly very close to that, but you might say, no, 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 I don't have a mallet big enough to hammer this frame in because it's 39 and 15 sixteenths. So that's a big mallet right. that you're going to need for that sixteenth of an inch. You don't want to do that. And you don't want to have right. a mason come out and rework the opening, even though if you had a mason come out and cut everything out and reblock and tooth it back in, that would be the most substantial secure way to secure that frame to that wall rather than bolting it. Right. But if I have to do it myself, and I've never done one, do you think that's going to be difficult for us? No. Because we're water um, treatment guys. I mean, doors we don't do. I've done interior doors on a house, but this is a totally different different deal, you know. I, I hear you. The, the skill set, in my opinion, is no different than what it would take to do an oil change. Um, are you doing it okay. right? Are you turning it left and right? Did you put the filter in? You know, do you have all the, you know, you know what I mean? It's just, right. it, what I find with gentlemen like yourself is you don't have the time to do it. So you hire somebody. Um, but right. in terms of it being difficult, no. And then I can talk to you for as long as you want about how to go about doing it. I've I've right. done it. So. Of course, my general manager is your salary. You do have the time. <laughs> well, and that's, if you get what that, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I do, and that's yeah. where the, the breakdown of, hey, man, I don't want to be here all weekend doing this. Yeah. But that falls on deaf ears there. Oh, yeah. Yep. So we'll start on Monday, so it takes till Friday. That's okay. We'll get it in there. It's just I want to get it in straight and true and secure, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I so don't the, want to just to rig that door halfway in there, you know. No, the, the way that you want to do it for yourself is you want to, you're going to have a clean rough opening. I'm going to know mm -hmm. that size. The thing's going to have a quarter inch on each side margin, a quarter at the head. You're going to get that right. frame in place. You're going to mark your holes where you're going to drill the three-eighths masonry drill bit. You're going to pull the frame out, drill all eight holes, mm -hmm. put it back in. You know, you, you've put it in place. You've shimmed it. You've leveled it. You've made sure it's plumb. Um, right. You've taken some wood wedge-shaped shims. You've jammed that in there. You then secure it um, mm -hmm. to the opening. You want to make sure that you haven't um, – uh, the ID of the frame needs to maintain 36 wide and 84 tall. It's going to come welded, so it's it's all, you're going to have to go out of your way to crush that frame so that now it's just like 36 and a quarter at the bottom, let's say. And once you get right. the frame in and it's secure, hang the door. Put all your hardware on. Make sure it works, mm -hmm. and then take your uh, your shims, crack them off, uh, put back or pull them out, put backer rod in there. Not pull them out, but put you know fill it with backer rod or caulk, backer rod and caulk, and then you're done. I mean, it's 
because you're not using, you're not drilling a hole in the top of the jam and getting a grout bag and pumping it full of mortar. This is no more right. than a one-day job, provided that your wall, you know, if you've got very porous cement block, yeah, you're going to have to think about how you're mm -hmm. going to do that. Um, if someone well, can weld, and they are they would... porous, they're not solid. You know, along the edge, or they probably are porous. Probably. So, what can I use wood? Can I mount wood jams in there or anything and secure it to that? Yeah. So that's a a lot of times what'll happen is someone will either either take a cold chisel and knock out that block so you can pack it with mortar, and that's a one day job. Mm -hmm. And you got to come back the next day, or people will right. line that opening with with wood to the proper size that I would provide, and then the frame would mm -hmm. come knocked down, and you would simply use like number fourteen wood screws and screw it down to that um, that okay. wood. But you still have to get the wood attached to the opening, you know, to that to the opening. The other thing you well, could do yeah. is the other thing you could do is custom since it's a custom made thing, you can go with a larger unit. And get a frame that's three-piece knockdown that the throat of the frame itself will go over mm -hmm. the edge of the wall completely and encapsulate the edge of the wall. Um, mm -hmm. Same concept. It might be a little bit easier to install that way um, because you could get right. the frame up in the opening. And I've done this many times. I get the header up because I'm wrapping over the wall, and then I will just take my right. welder and I will, I, will, I will just weld those miters. Grind it right. uh, because it's exterior, and you may not have a concern about you know a fire alarm going off in the area with the welder. That'd be a good way to do it too. And then you'll basically there'll be an angle like a, a floor anchor at the bottom of the jam that we would reverse, so that when the jam is right. in place, you would see this little thin piece of metal sticking out. You'd run a couple of con screws through it, a couple of tap cons okay. through each flange, and then put your threshold over it. So there's lots of ways to do it. Oh, well, do you have a welder? Now I am not a good welder, but some of the guys here can, you know. Yeah, the only reason you want to be better than poor at welding is because the gauge of this material is is on the thin side. It would be it would be 14 gauge, which is relatively thick for someone who can weld. But I don't know that right. I would want someone who doesn't weld ever to try to weld something relatively thin like that. Right, we tend to burn right through it. You're gonna just blow a hole. Right? They, we're, they weren't calling you ordered a new frame or new piece of a frame, you know. Or getting it and then bondoing it, and yeah, sure. You just want a guy who can lay a bead and you know just grind it. Right. Yeah, and I can do that. I can get that done. It's just not going to be me that does the welding. Right. Uh, but the rest of it, but I can certainly take a level, make sure she's straight and plumb. No yeah. problem there. But uh, the main thing is to secure it. I wish I could see what's on the other side of the old jam. You know, door frame. I mean. On the but inside? I don't know what's there. I don't know what's on the other side of our, the door frame that's there. I don't know how it's attached. I don't know if it's solid concrete there, or well, is it? Sure. You know, you should be able to wrap on that with your knuckle, and it'll either uh -huh. you know ping, ping hollow, or it's like no, no, no. That there's there's something in there, which means when that solid. wall went up originally, yeah. That when that wall went up, they were backfilling with mortar, and then they used an anchor called a T anchor. Well, it looks like a T, and it's corrugated, mm -hmm. and the top of the T goes in the throat of the frame, and that corrugation goes between the layers of block, and that's the most right. secure way to install it. So when you go to, if you go to take a 14-inch, you know, abrasive uh, cutter on your uh, on your, you know, on your saw cutter. And you're, you're going to hit some mm -hmm. metal, most likely, in there, so be mindful of that. You're going to blow, th blow through some blades. Ideally, you'd want to take your saw and, you, and just cut up that, you know, that grout line that's there and pull it out. Cut it that way. Okay, well, Mike, could the whole thing cut it. across it and kind of tear it out, yeah. Yeah, the only thing you want to do with that is just minimize any extraneous damage that you're going to do to the end of the wall. Right. Because anything we mess up, we got to fix. You got to patch it, yeah. And you got to fix it right, or the door's not going to hang right. Yeah. Maybe I can get the general manager to let me have a professional put this in, but let's get a quote and see what we're looking at. You know, basically for the equipment and the hardware to start with. And did you put a kicker plate on there and the door closer? Yes. And the hardware. Okay, very good. What was your name? Richard. Richard. Okay, yeah. I'm... But, so uh, tell me your your email address. I'll send you over a quote. Yeah, it's R Moore, M O O R E at Cashwater 
org. Architectural Builders Supply hopes you have enjoyed this program. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.